my god. Okay. Thank you all for joining us for our second monthly council check-in. And I'm Katie Kondrat. My pronouns are she, her. I'm the director of the Kingston Food Co-op. And we're joined by our council and our, um, my coworker, Siobhan DuPont, who's our community outreach coordinator. And we're gonna just jump right into some updates that was what we've been up to in the last month. And um, please feel free to include your questions and comments in the chat. So Siobhan, I'm gonna pass it to you to start with our membership update. Katie, hi everyone. My name is Siobhan, my pronouns are she, her. Um, just uh, giving a quick membership update. We have to date 1,037 members in our co-op and 165 of them are solidarity members, um, which is really exciting. And I'm also gonna jump into, if that's okay, um, some of our community engagement uh, slash events that we've been uh, working on. Um, we started our community walks, uh, which we're hoping to do the first Saturday of every month. Uh, we had one last week and it was really nice. It was a little snowy, but really um, good that people came out um, and we just walked together for an hour and it was great. Um, we're also uh, activating our working group meetings. So our member engagement uh, working group meets at the first Tuesday of every month at five o'clock and our food and social justice working group is gonna be meeting every other uh, Monday beginning uh, next Monday, February 15th at 5.30 p.m. Um, and you can find working group meeting times and Zoom information on our website at kingstonfoodcoop.com Kingston slash events. We have a calendar there and all the information is there if you guys ever wanna join the working group meetings. Um, also, uh, next month, we're hoping to arrange a co-op cleanup um, around our building after our community walk. So um, hopefully we'll be able to walk together and then come back to the meeting and clean up um, some trash and stuff that's kind of in the parking lot area and in the front of the co-op and just make it look nice and um, clean. And then uh, we're also planning a really fun virtual event with Soul Fire Farm and we're gonna be partnering with some other uh, local organizations. So that's gonna be happening in March. And when we firm up all the details, um, we'll share that on our events page and on our social media. So make sure you follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Kingston Food Co-op. And if I didn't leave anything out, I'm gonna pass it to Lindsay. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us and being interested in what's happening in your co-op these days. Uh, my name is Lindsay and I'm a council member. And I'm going to give an update on the very exciting and sexy topic of governance. We have been working really hard to make sure that all of our policies on how the council cover, uh, governs are clear so that we can create a really stable foundation for this co-op to move into the future once we become a working grocery store and you know we can last for decades very seamlessly. That's our overarching goal with governance. So we've spent uh, many hours now um, hashing out uh, policies on everything. Um, and I, I'm joking about it being exciting and all, but it actually is in a way because we've worked very hard to make sure that we're infusing our core values uh, into the policies and not having it be a separate thing that's just referred to, but is actually um, steeped throughout all the policies. So that part actually has been a little bit sexy. I'm not gonna lie. Um, speaking of the council, Oh, and when that's completed, those will be available for members to read through. So you will be able to, to see what our, our policy register will be available to members. Um, and uh, other news in the council is that we do have a, a seat on the council that's coming, will become open. Uh, if you are interested in what being on the council entails, you can go to our website and uh, we have a good description there. I'll just 
put that in the chat, that link. So uh, if you're if you want to if you have any questions, we're going to have a little Q and A with with prospective council candidates coming up in February. So uh, get on that; it's all happening very soon. If you have any interest at all, check out the website and then come to our Q and A and and uh, ask any questions you might have. The elections will be in April at our general meeting. I believe it's April 11th, and that will be on Zoom this year again, as it was last year, unfortunately. One of these days we'll have like a grand stomp and party where we do all this business. Um, but the general meeting should actually be fun this year because we do have a referendum question on that that our membership will have to vote on in regarding our bylaws. We need to, you know, officially codify our, our code of ethics, um, our, our values, I mean, our core values and put those into the bylaws. So that's kind of exciting. And um, and then of course our elections for our new council members. So that's all the super exciting world of governance. And so who's next that I pass to? Is that Joe? And I'll just add really quick that if you are watching on Facebook or later on um, YouTube, you can see, you can um, find that information about the candidate application at kingstonfoodcoop.com slash nominations. Okay, Joe, yeah. Sure, of course, um, thank you. Uh, for that, Katie, and thank you, Lindsay, for passing to me. Um, so we're entering what I think is the most critical time in the development of our co-op. Um, and that's kind of where we are birthing ourselves um, as a co-op and getting closer to opening, well, inching our way um, to the opening day. Um, and so we have the member engagement group um, that we've started and it's twice already. Um, and we're establishing plans around um, planning for the elections, educating the community at large about the co-op. Um, we're planning events. Um, we're also helping to design our building. So we are looking to, to design a process uh, to engage the co-op and uh, the community itself. So the community of Kingston um, and helping us with the design of, um, of the building that we'll actually live in. So um, our next meeting is on March 2nd. And um, there are lots of opportunities to get involved. And we would love to have folks um, get involved with us and, and really get uh, our co-op going and get the processes within the, uh, the co-op going. Uh, so yeah, I'm really excited uh, to announce that. And again, it's on March 2nd um, that we'll have another meeting. Um, I'm gonna pass it to Kivius. Yeah, hello everyone. My name is Kivius and um, you know, building off of Lindsay's governance and Joe's building, um, I'll be discussing exactly what's going in the building. Uh, we've been making a lot of leeway with finalizing the business plan. Um, and I'll split this into kind of three different departments. Um, the first is determining exactly what departments will go inside of the store. So uh, really taking, getting our hands dirty with how, you know, that shopping experience is gonna be. Um, outside of like, um, the shopping experience like in the store, but like some exact policies that go along with it, such as how do we create the most equitable shopping experience that is reflective of Kingston. Um, and the two ways we're doing that is we're working with a social analyst researcher um, to see if we can incorporate what's called triple bottom line into our approach. So how do we equally value people, planet and profit, um, starting with how do we create equitable um, pricing models, you know, income based pricing models, or should we use local currencies. Um, but also, as Joe mentioned, we really, really value um, the members' input in this. So um, the Social and Food Justice Working Group uh, will be, who will also be meeting um, Monday um, at 5 p.m. They will be taking a hand in working on policies and practices that we can um, enact inside of the grocery store, along with community projects that will kind of give us a taste of how it is um, to employ practices. Um, so if you want to be a part and show up to the meeting um, Monday at 5 p.m. February 15th, and um, you can have a hand in, in developing the, the rest of this business plan with us. Um, and with that, I will pass it over to Ron for the upcoming events. I think we already had some upcoming events from Siobhan, so maybe Katie can do a building update for us. Sure, sounds good. Um, and just a reminder to everyone who's watching, whether you're on Zoom or on Facebook, you can drop questions in the chat or in the comments of Facebook and we will 
get to them during this call. Um, all right, so I'm gonna give a little building update. So as we, ta we talked a little bit about the building during our last month's um, check-in and we have some exciting developments since, since then, which is that um, our building development committee has completed the RFQ, which is a request for qualifications, which is what we send out to our architects um, and other design team, um, uh, pers prospective design team members in order to understand if they're gonna be a good fit for designing our co-op. So that RFQ has been sent out to our selected, um, we did a we did kind of like a short list of, of architects and um, I think there was about 15 that we sent it out to. And we're really excited about, about the, the variety of folks that that went out to. Um, we chose architects who are all fairly local um as local as we could um, many of them have retail and grocery not necessarily grocery but retail or commercial experience um and just about all of them have some sort of um sustainability certifications including um net zero or lead or and i think in one case living building uh certification so that's really exciting exciting and and uh we'll be receiving those um, submissions in March. And at that point, we'll embark on the next step, which is to send out the request for proposals, which will be the more in-depth um, proposal for how our, our design space can look. And then and we'll, that'll go to a, a very, very short list of firms. Um, and from there, we'll choose our architect. So we're getting really close and that's really exciting. Um, and another building development uh, development is that we're going to be um, we're we're working now on figuring out kind of like as Joe mentioned what are the places that we can integrate as much um, co-op member and community input into this process as we can. So uh, what are the things that are kind of immovable? What are the pieces that, that we know we need to have in place in order to make our co-op um, financially viable and what are the places where we can really integrate as much community input as possible in order to make it as reflective of our membership and the Kingston community as we can. So that's a process that we're working on now and and uh, and I'm feeling really good about that. So were there any other do we have any more updates? I think that was our list, right? We really sped through it last time we took a long time. So we were like, we're gonna go so fast this time. And we did. Um, uh, Siobhan, did you have any other dates you wanted to mention for um, any upcoming events? I think you, you, you hit them all, right? We have working groups. We have Soul Fire Farm. Yeah, we're in good shape, right? Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm not seeing a lot of questions in the chat. Oh. Oh, I think we're, I don't know if that was my audio or yours, but um, I'm, not, I'm not seeing a lot of questions in the chat at the moment. If anybody has questions, this is a really good time to, uh, to add them in. We'll give a little space for that. Um, in the Let's see, I'm going to just uh, take a look over at our Facebook and see if anybody's got anything. Okay, Jamila says y'all are doing a fantastic job. Thanks, Jamila. Um, Gay says, I'm afraid I have to come and go as Mother Zoom at this time. Okay, this, yes, Gay, you can watch it later on Facebook and it'll be on YouTube forever. We just um, had a question come in that said, how come six of you are seen and the rest of us are not? That's a very good question. Katie, would you like to answer that question? Oh, sure. Yeah, last time we had our council check-in, um, we did allow everybody to have their videos on and it made the recording really challenging later because the way that Zoom records it, um, you can see everybody there at the same time. And um, so we're doing videos off this time, but for our, for our council meeting um, starting in March, we'll have our open council meetings uh, and you'll, you'll be getting information about that, but those will be, um, you can have your faces seen at that time. <laughs> Sorry that we can't enjoy faces all together. 
also Barbara maybe came in a little bit late and um, missed the introduction. So the faces that you're seeing, which are Katie, Lindsay, Joe, and Kivius are all members of the council. And then Siobhan is our, she's a staff member of the, of the co-op and she's the outreach coordinator. So um, that's another explanation of, of why you could see us. And I see another question came in from Matt saying, have we ever discussed accepting cryptocurrencies as payments? I'm gonna kick that one to Kivius, our finance. Um, we have not discussed uh, cryptocurrencies. Um, one main, um, well, we've discussed complementary currencies, so currencies that are used locally because you can develop a local economy with them. Crypto is a little more universal. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, we can have those conversations going forward, but right now the focus is local currencies because it's within our realm. And we do accept Hudson Valley Current, so you can buy into the co-op with, with the Hudson Valley Current currently current currently Did yes and i saw oh oh i uh, so i was just making sure we got to dave's question about um council meeting minutes did we get that one thank you yes um lindsay do you want to take that on governance uh yeah that's a great question um we are uh, we are moving into uh a open council meeting format so I believe starting next month, we're gonna transition these council Q and A's into an open meeting. And so then they will be available. I think that we, the, the general plan is to have a members only section of the website. So you can go back and you can, you can access any of the meeting notes, you can access past meetings and all of that will be available to every member. And also you can attend our monthly council meeting. Um, so we ha we just have to get that we're moving we're moving towards that. So the answer is yes, almost. Yeah, and I see um, Pat's question: Will the development of the physical space include increasing its size? Um, we're considering that possibility. So right now, the building, um, if you're familiar with it, it's at 708 Broadway, and um, the main space is. Uh, about 9,000 square feet. And that doesn't include a, um, a garage building that's at the back that's detached. So we're considering a lot of different options for how this building could look. We're talking about potentially building up, adding a second floor, maybe adding a mezzanine, um, potentially expanding it backwards to meet the garage in the back, or um, maybe to just expand the footprint altogether the the we don't have a ton of room to to expand the space if we're not building up so that's one limitation uh but but we're definitely open to to all of those things you know our our pro forma includes our pro forma which is our financial projections looks at um both for 4500 retail square feet and 6000 square feet of retail space and, and so we've done projections for both of those sizes. So we're probably not gonna go in terms of like floor space for the actual store itself. We probably won't go above that much above 6,000 square feet, but um, we could potentially think about expanding the, the space itself to, to allow for other, um, other uses. And let's see. Barbara, <laughs> other elders who are turned in. Probably, I think so. Appreciate all of our elders who show up and all of our youth. Um, Matt, can we disperse information about the Hudson Valley currency? I'm not familiar with it. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, so we have, we could, Akibius actually um, is uh, in, works with the Hudson Valley current. So Akibius, I don't know if you wanna give a little overview about the current and then we can send more information out in an email too. I also put the website um, in the chat um, under it, so. Yeah, um, <laughs> best way to explain this. Um, you know, it's essentially a, a currency that can only be used in the Hudson Valley um, with a goal to see how can we uh, contain and develop economies together. I think that's a good, <laughs> that's a good elaboration of that. But yeah, feel free to visit our website, and, uh, check out the projects and all of that fun stuff. Awesome. So yeah, this 
this moment we're accepting um we're accepting currents for folks can pay for their memberships with currents um and some we we pay some of our our staff can opt into being paid in part in currents um so i re i receive a small amount of my salary in currents um and uh yeah it's an exciting it's an exciting possibility and i think when the co-op is is up and running as a grocery store um it'll be a really important way that we can actually uh strengthen our economy by leaning into the local currency it's exciting and new for me at least um other questions coming up for people we have a few more minutes when it is anything leave space for questions Facebook for questions um, I, I, I don't see anything since Gay's question. Uh, I see something from Henry. Um, it seems to me the delivery is here to stay, so that should probably be factored into the building design and even think of pickup strategies. Oh, he's talking about like curbside kind of thing that stores are doing now. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. Yeah, it's interesting. I was just talking to the consultant that we we use for our um, business planning and and uh, financial projections, and we were talking about um, you know this how to how to balance this kind of new world of needing to have curbside pickup and potentially delivery with um, the added costs of that. It doesn't necessarily you know just in terms of like creating a viable. Um, store at our kind of scale and so how do we how do we get creative about that and so yeah agreed it's going to be something we're going to have to figure out in this new in this new hopefully soon post pandemic world <laughs> for, uh, Henry says for instance I used to pick up shares for my CSA to put on my porch for local pickup awesome Beautiful. Yeah, I think there's there are lots of um, there's been some conversation in the community about doing um, you know a, having a, a neighborhood hub for grocery pickup. Um, so like there's one grocery shopper for a neighborhood or for like a, your block or for your street or whatever it is, and that person picks up groceries for the neighbors. And I think that's a really sweet idea too. Does anybody have other questions or ideas they want to share or concerns or thoughts? <laughs> we're open, we're here for it all. <laughs> okay, thanks for the positive feedback about this meeting, Dave. <laughs> we appreciate you. Yeah, it feels good to, to be doing this also because, you know, of course, one of our core values is transparency. Um, and so we're really trying to, to lean into that more. So thanks to all of you for showing up so that we can we can be accountable to to our members and to the community. <laughs> Does the co-op also retain any of the parking lot next door asks Pat. Great question. Um, we do not. So right now the 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 property that we have access to is it okay that I'm answering this. Does someone else want to take it? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, the property that we have access to right now is just 708 Broadway, which doesn't include the parking lot of the big bubble building, which some of you might be familiar with. Um, however, we are in conversation with the building owners of we're a big bubble, I know. Um, of the big bubble and to see if that's something that we can access because also our market study has been really clear that in order for our grocery store to be successful, we really need more parking, um, which is unfortunate, especially as I think we're all thinking about how we can move away from a car based society. Um, but at the moment, um, you know, we still live in the place we live in, <laughs> in the culture we live in. And so we will hopefully have access to that parking lot. It's, it's in process. Um, Henry asked, do you have a map of the property with buildings and measurements? Uh, we have a land survey and we currently have a local architect who's creating some AutoCAD drawings for us 
doing some interior elevations and uh, and getting getting us all set up for our architects to come in and do do the full design. So yes, it's happening, and we're using a local architect. And um, yeah, <laughs> what else do we have? Anything else on the Facebook questions? I didn't see anything else new come in, but maybe we can give um, folks a heads up like for next month, um, it'll be a little bit different since it'll be an open council meeting. So um, yeah, will questions be, will there be room for questions like the, the second half or the last 15 minutes or maybe give people a heads up on how that'll work? We haven't exactly formulated um, how it will work, but I, I'm expecting that at the end of the meeting, we will have a time like a question and comment period. So you can make comments even if you uh, don't have a question and you can <laughs> make questions. And uh, we haven't figured out how we, we, we're working on this. So sorry, the best way to find out is to come and see what it ends up looking like. And you'll get a lovely email from Siobhan as well, giving you a heads up on that. Totally, thanks Lindsay. Awesome. Um, well, if there's no more questions, we're very close. Uh, we're very close to 5:30. So if if that's the end of of what you all have, <laughs> yeah, we love the ideas that are coming in in the chat. I don't. I know that some of you, that you Facebook folks are not seeing these, but um, there's a whole little side conversation going on about how do we get. Um, maybe we can offer credits for not driving a car to the co-op. Um, some support for the idea of shopping for your block, a pool of cargo bikes. I'm into this. I'm into this. So um, yeah, these are the kinds of ideas that we, we really want to hear from you and, and your input and your ideas. You know, we're, we're a group of, of six right now, including Siobhan um, in the leadership. And I think we have really good ideas and we're learning from a lot, a lot of different people. But you know, our membership is over a thousand people now, and there's so and there's so much that each of you has to offer. So we really encourage your ideas and your and your thoughts through this whole process, and and that's that's why we're doing it. That's why this is happening. The cooperation part is really important. And let's uh, on that, Katie. Let's just do we have the feedback form on the website live yet? Yeah. So there is, mm -hmm. if you go to the website, kingstonfoodcoop.com, there is a feedback form where when these ideas hit you and you're like, oh, I wonder if the council is working on this or has anyone thought of this, you can put it in the feedback form and it'll come right to the council. Um, or you can also email the council directly at council at kingstonfoodcoop.com. So um, definitely keep reaching out and we respond to all the emails that we get and look out for some town halls that will be upcoming where we will be sourcing our thousand plus members for um, building input on our, on our building and that upcoming project. So that's all exciting ways to contribute. And I do think also that Rich brought up that we didn't, I don't think we announced when the sustainability working group next meeting is. Siobhan, do you have that information? Yeah, yeah. thank you, Rich, for reminding me. I'm sorry that I left that out. That is happening on Monday, March 8th at 6 p.m. And um, again, the Zoom link will be on the event page. I haven't created the Zoom link yet, but that's where it'll be um, on our page on kingstonfoodcoop.com slash events. Thank you, Rich. Thank you. Yeah, and Rich Schiaffo is um, one of our co-chairs of the, of the recently revitalized sustainability committee or working group um, along with um, Jessica Meyer. So looking forward to that group coming back to life. Awesome. Well, thank you all for being here and for spending time with us and for being interested and invested in your co-op. And um, we appreciate you. This has been really nice. <laughs> Um, okay, thank you all. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone.